All right, here's a new one to me. Now this this rim isn't doing it as bad, but I had brakes put on my uh, front uh, steer brakes put on my truck um, on Sunday because the because I had a cracked brake shift and uh, they uh, they basically, from what I understand, they put grease on the studs you know to help break the studs and uh, then basically afterwards it looks like all your lug nuts are loose because they keep they keep streaking and now after you get um, after you get your brakes done when you have aluminum rims you need to go back for a retorque between 50 and 100 miles I think some guys say 150 but uh the guys at the TA told me um, before 100 miles. So I stopped back in. I had my retort done. But my, uh, I'm, now I'm wiping the grease off my lug nuts so it doesn't look like I have a leaky seal on there. Back here's the load I picked up from, uh, picked up this load of concrete in Pueblo, Colorado, and no bounce load I mean 20 mile bounce which in this business we all know is basically no bounce and so what uh, what I have here are concrete railroad ties going to uh, Newtown North Dakota not exactly where I want to go this time of year being since it's late November but considering the load I took to Pueblo was a nice pan load you know like four four bucks a mile or something like that and now I jumped under this load for for uh, a little over two and a half or around two and a half a mile um, going up to North Dakota I made some uh, made some good money finally I think these two trips was more profitable now in order to hold on to that money I'm gonna have to be smart about getting out of uh, getting out of North Dakota. And I met up with a really nice fellow yesterday. It was a uh, Landstar. He's a Landstar veteran, flatbed flatbed driver since '94. I think he said uh, been with Landstar 12 years or so. And he gave me some pointers on uh, getting hooked up, getting out of North Dakota. So we're gonna follow what he said and basically when you go someplace like that first mistake I made was taking a load that didn't pay a week's salary which this one does not um, but I'm not going to turn down a load once I've booked it I'm not going to cancel on a load and blacklist myself you know to any agent out there it's just not the way I, I operate and uh so basically, once I get to North Dakota and I get empty, his advice to me is simply, you know, get empty, drive to Fargo. Um, first check loads in the area and just make sure there's not some crazy load that just popped up by luck. He said, but after, you know, if there's no loads near Newtown, he said, set your, go, drive to Fargo, set your radius, to 500 miles and pick the load you want regardless of the bounce pick an either a nice paying load or a load that wants that gets you to where you want to go now thanksgiving's about two weeks out and i'd like to be home by thanksgiving because that would if not that would put me out about four four weeks straight so we're going to try out his advice and uh i'll get back with you guys Drive safe. Let's see, I am on 85, US 85 North out of, um, just got into Wyoming and uh, headed north on US 85 off of 25, off of I-25. And parts of I-25 are closed right now to light, um, what, they, what they term it, light light, weight, or pretty much empty vans, empty dry van trailers, or um, they, they cut
because of high winds. Now I'm out here in the prairie here on 85, and I mean, you can hear the wind is just absolutely crazy. I mean, this is just, I mean, I've never experienced wind like this. I'm, uh, I'm basically, uh, basically 78,000 pounds and I mean I am getting blown you know I'm, I'm 78,000 pounds of concrete railroad time so I'm not a high profile vehicle the highest thing on my vehicle obviously I have the uh, windbreaker or the air dam on top of my sleeper cab still because I haven't been able to remove it but I mean this wind is just absolutely insane. I mean, that's what, that's why the camera's jiggling so bad, and uh, obviously, or well, maybe you can't tell that while we've been talking, I slowed down from uh, my cruise setting of 58 miles an hour down to, uh, down to basically 50, uh, just because there's no control. I was just and uh, if you can see the tumbleweeds, you can see the speed, the tumbleweeds are crossing the road. There goes some. But I, I don't know if my camera's picking them up or not. They may be, uh, they may be too close. But this is uh, definitely one of the truckers' uh, truckers' woe is uh, high winds. I mean, they're invisible, and it's really hard to tell until they really start picking up and gusting. Now these winds are fairly sustained. I mean, it's, they're pretty much a sustained wind. I'm not sure. I don't even know. I would imagine over 35 miles an hour because they've closed I-25 north to uh, high, profile, uh, high profile empty vehicles. Anyway, we'll see if we can't catch a big old tumbleweed crossing the road before we uh, turn off the uh, turn off the camera but this is uh, probably the highest winds I've ever driven in so I just thought I'd uh, share it with the, um, the other drivers and, and any other prospective drivers